In section 10.2, we're going to be talking about polar coordinates and a little bit longer, a little bit further in polar graphing. Um, and it's, under, it's important that we understand exactly what polar coordinates are. And basically, it's just another way of naming the location of some point on a plane. Um, the ordered pair is in the form R theta, where R is a signed distance or a directed distance from the pole. Now the pole, and this picture that you see here is um, polar graph paper basically and you'll understand in a minute exactly how all this works but the pole, in this polar graph paper you have the x-axis and the y-axis where they are normally located. The pole is the origin so the point zero zero on the rectangular coordinate plane or the Cartesian coordinate plane is is the pole. The positive x-axis is referred to as the polar axis. Right. So R is the directed distance from the pole, so the directed distance from the origin. And then theta is an angle in standard position. So if we have um, some, co some point P with coordinates R and theta, the way you think about plotting the points is you think about the angle theta first. So let's say, just for the sake of having some way, something to talk about, let's say that our point, well, I'll tell you what, let me just start out here where we can see a good. <clears throat> All right, let's say point P is here. If you draw the line from the origin to P, this angle is the angle theta. Now, I happen to have drawn theta as a positive angle in standard position. You might also see theta be the negative angle in standard position. You might have angle theta that has a rotation of more than one revolution. Okay, so theta is some positive angle, some, excuse me, some angle whose terminal side goes through point P. And then R is the distance from the pole to P. Now, what's kind of cool about polar coordinates is there's, you know, there's more than one ordered pair that we could use to label point P. We could use the ordered pair R theta, which is what I've got drawn. You could also have coordinates point P that would be R and theta plus pi over 2, or excuse me, 2 pi. So you could use any angle coterminal with theta and the same value of R and, and still be describing the same point P. You may th use a negative angle, so theta minus 2 pi would also work. Or, you could consider the negative angle that I'm going to call alpha, which is direct, going to have a terminal side directly across the circle from where the terminal side is for theta. And as if you think about rotating in that negative direction, alpha radians, and then use a value of r that is negative, that's still going to locate the same point. So if you've got the angle that takes you to the opposite side of the plane, basically opposite side of the unit circle, I still think about unit circle, <clears throat> then the location of your point, you use a negative value for R to go across to the other side of the point. All right, so let's do this. I need... another coordinate plane. Okay, here is a point. 3, 2 pi over 3. Now, when you're working with polar graph paper, and there is some, there is some available for you to download um, in Blackboard. If you haven't located it yet, you want to definitely do that. Um, when you're looking at polar graph paper, of course, the positive x, you know, the x-axis and the y-axis are where I've 
indicated. And then the other rays that are coming out of that circle are going to be angles that are for the most part special angles. So if we think about moving our way around the circle we've got an angle of zero radians here, pi over two radians would be vertical, pi radians, of course three pi over two radians. So the pi over four angles um, let's see five pi over four would be here. The pi over four angles are the angles that split the um, the quadrants. That's the word I'm looking for. And then of course pi over 6 is here. 7 pi over 6. No, that's wrong. That's 5 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6 is here. And 11 pi over 6. And then pi over 3 here, putting 2 pi over 3 there, 4 pi over 3 is in the third quadrant, and 5 pi over 3 is in the fourth quadrant. Now there are some rays that we haven't labeled because they're not special angles. This ray, you'll notice, is halfway between 0 and pi over 6. So these rays are going to be multiples of pi over 12. You're not going to need them often. The other thing that you'll notice, okay, so these are the ones that you're not going to need. They're multiples of pi over 12. Um, just know that they're there. The other thing that I hope you notice is that um, the concentric rings on this are going to indicate units for values of R. So let me get rid of all that extra stuff we don't need. Okay. So if I'm going to plot the point, 2 pi over 3 is the angle. I'm going to think about rotating around the angle 2 pi over 3, and I'm going to think about where that terminal side is. And then I'm going to count out that ray positive 3 units. So 1, 2, 3. There's my point. Okay, and let's call that point A. I can label it A. Now what I'd like you to do is stop and think about other ordered pairs you could use to name the same point. The ones that spring to mind for me are 3 and negative 4 pi over 3. So I would think about rotating around negative 4 pi over 3 units and then counting out a distance of 3. Or if I used a negative value for r, negative 3, I would need to use the ray that's directly across the circle from the location of our point A. So the angle I could use could be 5 pi over 3. I might use negative 3, negative pi over 3. Okay. 5 pi over 3 is the positive angle whose terminal side is that blue ray. Negative pi over 3, of course, is the negative angle with that same terminal side. Now be careful when you're counting. Um, most of the time, just to avoid too much stuff coming together at once, uh, the rays for your graph paper don't come inside that first ring. It still counts. This is 1 two, three, four. So you're counting rings even though the rays don't come all the way in. It would just be way too messy if you think about that. All right. So let's get another one to work with. And I would like you to plot the point negative 4, 5 pi. We'll call that point B so you can label it on your graph. And if you want to use the same grid that you used for point A, that's fine. Um, but that's the point I'd like you to label. And then I'd like you to come up with two other ordered pairs that would label the same, that you could use to name that same point. Now we all may have different ordered pairs and we could all be right. So if you get ones that are different from mine and you're not really sure, shoot me an email or something and I'll just verify that your points are going to work too. 
So for plotting this point, we're going to think about the angle. 5 pi, all right, so there's 1, 2 pi, 3, 4 pi, 5 pi has a terminal side right there. It's the negative x-axis. And then we're going to count negative 4 units. So we're going to go to the other side of the circle and count out 4 units. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's our point B. As far as other points, other ordered pairs you could use to label this same point, certainly 0, 0 would work. Okay, And you have to know what context you're working in to recognize that that is 0 radians for an angle there. Um, you could have negative 4 pi is another option. You think about rotating around pi radians and then counting negative 4 units. You could have positive 4. You know what? That first order pair is wrong. Sorry. 4, 0 would work, not 0, 0. Zero radians and then count out four units. <clears throat> All right, so the other other one that we could use with positive four two pi could be another angle. Basically, any angle coterminal with zero radians and a value of r that's four, or any angle coterminal with pi radians and a value of r that's negative four, should work fine. Now, you are familiar with 